So I'm continuing with my digital inking within the Photo P program. And I just made two circles with my shape tools and then using the layer styles to give those shape tools a stroke. And then setting them to multiply mode so that they block each other out or don't block each other out so you can see their lines. And then I have to see where they overlap and then erase them. Come on, stay with me. Oh, it's because I'm on the magic wand. Here we go. So, it's this layer I want to erase from. And what do I want to erase? I'm going to use my lasso. Just from that one circle, I want to erase inside there. But when I do that, it changes the stroke outline. So how do I manage that? What I do is I right click on the layer. To take out these layer styles, I say rasterize the layer style. And then it turns it into pixels. So if I rasterize the layer style, does that, change that to multiply mode, right? And then I can delete that edge of the circle. So there's just lots of ways you can make line art work. And then I'm just going to put pull all those into the digital ink layer. But before that, I can clean up that edge really quick on my digital ink layer where it overlaps with my circles. But I got to be in the right layer. There we go. There we go. Whoops. What is going on? What are you doing, Photo P? It's glitching on me but I'm showing you complicated stuff. What is it doing? Let me deselect. Let me go back in history. There we go. Zoom in. Wait, why are you glitching? Where'd you go? It's just not showing me a layer. That is very annoying. Hmm. So I'm going to save it and see if I can. So I'm going to save it as my PSD and then see if I can reopen it in Photo P and if it will show me that layer again. And I'm going to close a lot of these links I don't need open. All right, now I'm going to open Photo P. So if you get glitches, because we're working at high resolution, and we don't want that to affect our brush. And then I bring in my PSD. And yeah, I just lost this layer, strangely. So I'm going to duplicate it again. I'll just show you. Set this layer onto normal mode or multiply mode. Duplicate it. And then Option Command T to stretch it out to get that little sprocket for the helmet. And then I need to get rid of where it overlaps. So I'm going to rasterize this layer style, that stroke, set it to multiply, and then delete where it overlaps right here. Okay, and then before I merge them, I'm going to take my digital ink layer and I'm going to delete that little spur from there. And now, this is where it glitched on me last time, I'm going to merge them together. So I do that by making sure they're all rasterized in their layer style. Make sure it's all on multiply mode. And then select all of them and say layer, merge layers, all my inking layers. There we go. And now they're all on the same layer and I can continue with my, can save it and continue with my brush. Right. 
You make it a little bit thicker here. I usually work between 30 and 50 pixels for my brush size when I'm doing cartoons, spot illustrations. Oh, but because I reopened Photoshop, I have to reset my smoothing and my pressure sensitivity. And you'll see it makes a big difference. There we go. That's what I want. Once you get the feel for it and you have your settings where you want them, you can go a little bit faster. And don't don't worry if you have to piece it into a few lines. There's nothing wrong with that. And you don't have to be a slave to your sketch. You can decide to add a little bit of variation if you want to. And you can let it taper off. The reason I prefer using pressure sensitivity for line art, especially for print illustrations, instead of a technical line, is technical a line allows for no variation. But when you're doing a gesture line, you can taper it and change it a little bit if you want to. And I can just clean it up like that. Okay, let's do the plumage. Here, I'll finish the shoulder and then I'll get into the plumage. So, just like landscapes or character designs, illustrations have focal points. They might not have foreground, middle ground, and background, but if they're characters, they have heads and eyes. Heads and eyes are, tend to be the focal point, right? Maybe I want to put a little highlight in the eye. So these might be done with thicker lines. Come on. There we go. So let's outline a little highlight. I think my smoothing is too high. It's slowing me down too much. There we go. That's better. So you'll notice I have a lot of thick lines around the eyes. And then on the plumage, I might have some thick lines and then thinner lines as I get away from the eyes. Right. Nope. It also matters how much you're zoomed in. And of course, what size your brush is. So again, I find between 30 and 50 as a good range for pressure sensitive brushes. And when I do technical lines for animation, I do something more like 15. And if you're at a good resolution, that should give you a nice line weight. Remember, you don't have to take just the curve that it gives you. You can set your rotate tool to find an, an easier angle to set those curves. Just for your hand. It's like an inker moving the, the sheet that they're drawing on around. See, I like that, but I'm going to smooth it a little bit more. There we go. I 
under the backs of all the curves. And connect them. And again, you don't have to be a slave to your sketch. I decided to make that a little bit fuller. Because I liked, didn't like how that's going to horizontal. And these little open internal marks, they're just for a little bit of texture. And this might inform my coloring a little bit too, these internal marks. Ah, I'm going to have to piece it. It can be tough when you have smoothing on to change angles abruptly, so it's best to stop, lift it up, then attack it from another angle. And then if you need to make those connections, you can do that. And this isn't a logo, so not everything needs to be perfect and refined. Or you can even just leave it open. And then sometimes I just resort to using my lasso and drawing the shape I want and then filling it with black. Or just using my brush and filling it where the lasso is because the lasso can work as a stencil that way. That's really helpful for tapering or cleaning up little edges like that. And what do I mean by tapering? I want to take this edge and I want it to, to round out. I can just brush that in. So since we're inking in a raster program, we can use all the advantages of those raster programs. What are the other tricks of those raster programs? Well, I just tapered those so I can steal these marks, copy them, paste them, move them, and then command, uh, option command T, rotate them, stretch them, hold down shift, distort them, make them work for another part of my design. A lot of squinting involved. 